let's see. Okay, so our so our agenda is to have public comment initially. So is there any public comment for the people who are here that are not on the board? Which I, there's one, maybe potentially one person, although that could be somebody from the newspaper, but I can't tell. I have a public comment. This is Jen McLean. Hey Jen, go ahead. I just want to say that you guys have a really tough job and you probably don't hear a lot of positive things a lot. So I just want to say that I think you're doing a good job. And Thank you, that you're considering all of the different towns and the campuses and the kids' needs. And, um, and I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Hello, who's this? Tutu. Hi, sorry, hey. this is, this, hi, this is Tutu. Yeah, I finally I had to Google how to unmute myself. <laughs> okay. I missed it. But this is uh, Dorothy Hill. Hi, Dorothy. Do you have any public comment? Um, nope, really. I just received um, Mr. Pennock's email, so just trying to listen in and see where we're headed with all the suggestions that came in from the last one. Gotcha. Are you, do, do you have, are you a, where are you a community member and do you have children in the school? I guess would be a good question. Yep. Um, I live in East Hardwick uh -huh. and I have uh, one student um, at HES. He's a current fifth grader. And I have uh, one student at Hazen, and he is currently in eighth grade. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, and so the person whose phone number ends in 05, I'm going to tell you if you need to, if you have a PC and you're trying to unmute yourself, you press Control D, and that should unmute you. Um, oh, except you're not on. A, maybe you're not on a computer. And I don't know how to the do that. The phone is star phone. six. Star six if you're on the phone. Okay, so at any point, if you figure out how to unmute yourself, we'd love to know who you are because that's helpful to us. Um, okay, so thank you, Jen, for your public comment. I'm not 100% sure how to proceed with this meeting because now we are supposed to talk about school configurations and maybe or Rice, you can help me out with this one. There were two things that came up um, recently that are not on the agenda. One is the fact that um, our, okay, looks like 05 just unmuted. Hey, 05, are you, phone number of the ending 05, who are you? Can you tell us who you are? Hi, this no. is Monica. Okay. Hey, Monica. Hi. Um, are you, what town are you from? I uh, work at Hardwick Element. Okay. Did and, you have any, did yeah. you have any public comment or anything you want to say? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so Adam and I have uh, talked a little bit today because we had two things that maybe should be I don't know about adding them to the agenda tonight, and I think that the board should decide what they think about this. One is that uh, Will Adams has asked for a leave of absence for next year to be able to work on another program that is going with the OSSU. So he would no longer be a sixth grade classroom teacher, but he would be working within the SU. And then the other thing is uh, that Craig Wilson, um, Thanks, Adam. Craig Wilson uh, submitted his resignation for next year. He'll finish this year, but uh, Woodbury does not currently have a principal for next year. Um, and I, I know that I wanted to know how the board felt about adding those two things to the agenda tonight. And Orice, I wasn't sure about the legality of adding something like the principal uh, like a principal thing we, to the agenda without warning it. Uh, um, that's right. Either one of them had a problem a couple months ago where at one of these meetings, we could only discuss those items that were um, on the agenda. 
Right. So that's why I'm asking her rights because she has a pretty decent knowledge of, of this kind of stuff. And these are things that just came up. And so I'm wondering if we have to push them to the May meeting. We can, but I just I thought I would ask the question. Being oh. in like two weeks and I they're not one agenda, other may have feelings, not so much with resigning, but with the impact principal in Liverpool. So I would put off until our May 5th meeting or whatever that date is, May 4th, May 6th. I would put them off till May 6th. Okay. Um, and give ample time to discuss them. Yeah, there was there was a lot of reverberation, um, Tammy. I got that. I think that what Arice is saying is that she thinks that it would be better for us to save them until our May meeting. It's in two weeks, and that Correct. would allow for the public to know we were going to be discussing those items. Um. I think I think that perhaps what would be important to say at this meeting would be that uh, the information I mean I, I don't I, I don't th I think maybe well, let's say this we're not going to make decisions about either of these two things one of them is that uh, Adam has asked or sorry that will has asked for I guess we could, Adam, do you think we should just put Will's leave request in the folder for next month? Yeah, I think it's, it's fine to put both of these in the in the folder. I think Orise is, is right. Um, the reason we won't warn agendas is so that if the public um, is interested in a particular item, they have an opportunity to show up. Okay. Sorry. And I think that it's, it's, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just caught the only... The, that there were two items and one was um, Craig Wilson's piece, but I, I just sort of, the I just didn't hear what the second item was that we're tabling till May 5th. Will Adams has requested um, a, a leave of absence for a year from his OSUED position as a classroom teacher at Harbick Elementary so that he can do the OSSU social and emotional learning teaching position that will be based at HES, but is a grant okay. funded and it's there's a little bit of legality regarding the um, I don't fully understand it but regarding like accruing time and the difference between accruing it for the OSUED and accruing it through OSSU and this sure. is a grant funded position through OSSU not through OSUED yeah so okay thanks yeah, yeah. so we're gonna, we're gonna Catherine can I say something I just, uh, the only thing I just, um, I know that I saw that it's um, posted on School Spring, and I just, I'm putting it out there that I just really hope that we don't get into a situation again like we did last year at the end of the year. We're getting into May already, and to go through some sort of process and interviews, and um, so I, I hope that, I mean, I'm assuming plans are being put together to form some sort of committee and to move forward. Um, Right. So, so there's so go ahead adam yeah i can just speak briefly to that um yeah catherine and i thought it best to to get on that as quickly as possible regardless of what decision you make at the may meeting so we've we've moved forward and we've advertised it we're getting uh applicants um i actually we spoke with one who had some questions and um i've asked heather to head up the committee so we are moving forward as we normally would um trying to keep in mind that, you know, based on your decision in May, we might, um, we might stop that process or not. Um, and I think that it's important for everyone on the board to understand that part of what Adam's talking about is the fact that perhaps we will be splitting a, a principal between the two smaller schools. And that's something that will be on the table to be discussed at the May meeting. Um, I'm not trying to to say any decisions have been made, obviously, as the board has not made any decisions, but it will be, it is important for you all to know that that is something we will be talking about. So I think that people should talk about it and you are welcome to encourage the public to bring forth ideas, but we 
are facing some pretty serious, we will be facing some pretty serious implications from what has happened uh, with COVID-19 and what, how that's going to affect the budget uh, in the next year and then actually the year after that as well. Um, so we are gonna put both of those things on the May meeting, which leaves us with, I just, uh, uh, go ahead. I just have a quick question. Um, just taking that information into account mm -hmm. um, about just taking in the new information, both about um, budgetary changes and about um, principalship changes. Um, it seems like that will factor into our discussion of reconfiguration quite significantly. And so I, I, I just, I'm wondering if we can, I know we can't talk about it at this meeting, but it just makes sense that it's gonna be part of our discussion about reconfiguration, right? And so I just wanna um, be aware of I mean, that. I, I think it's fine if, I mean, we, you all received the emails about the the meeting the webinar that happened and um i think it's fine if people want to ask questions right now i mean we don't we don't have a lot of public right now who's interested in giving information about new new configuration ideas so my right. thought my thought for the rest of this meeting would be if you all have things you want to ask questions about regarding the budget and the things that the webinar said um and sort of considerations that we'll have for the budget i mean a, there's a lot of unknowns. That's probably the biggest takeaway that I went, like it's gonna be hard and we don't know exactly how things are gonna work. Um, but I think that if we wanna talk about that, and then I think we also need to talk about uh, how we're coming, how we are making the decision to narrow down this very large list of things that we have. So that would be my proposal for talk for the rest of the meeting, I guess. I don't know how, I'm happy to hear if anybody has any other opinions. Ex in, 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 uh, in a di like including the public who is on this call. So if anybody from the public who's here, either Dorothy or Monica has something that they want to say with regards to configuration, you are welcome to say it now or at any point during this conversation. So this is this, yeah. Catherine? Yes. This is Orize. I did not receive any information on the webinar. Is it possible for either you or Adam to forward that to me now on my email? Yep, I will work on that right now. Thank you. Or I should have got it from the VSBA too. Yep. I From VSBA? Yes. I received nothing I, uh, from them. The email out, um, the end of last week was, um, links to the handout and the seminar itself. I've received nothing from VSBA and I had issues with the well, formatting the of the email to the boards. So I've just been cleared for that yesterday. Okay, well, all right, so you may want to get with Adam and find out why the VSBA may not have you on their list as a board member. It probably hasn't been sent in yet. Adam, I'm not seeing the email that you, I know you sent something out though about it. Um, I yeah. got the VSBA, let me send that to Orice. Okay, thank you. I'd appreciate anything. Um, Here I found Orice. it. it, it O-R-I-S-E at no, it's a Ainsworth at osu ossu dot org. It's a Ainsworth or a or o Ainsworth. O, o Ainsworth. Okay, I've got I got it, Kim. Okay. All right, I just I sent just it sent off. the note that I took. Okay. Okay, thanks. Dave was supposed. So Dave anyone... was supposed to have fixed my name. Um. Friday, I think it was. Okay, I have one from Rose and one from Adam. Thank you, Rose. And one from Catherine. Okay. So we should be okay. on set. So does anyone have any questions about the implications of COVID-19 on the budget for both for this year and for next year? 
the information that you guys sent out was more on what's going on with the state and had less to do with how that actually impacts our budget. From what I've understood, and Adam can correct me if I'm wrong about this, but from what I've understood is that the because everyone is going to be getting pinched pretty severely, um, and everybody who gets pinched affects everyone else, there's going to be a shortfall this year that is going to use up all of the funds that are there to cushion a shortfall, which then means that next year when all of the alcohol and lottery and meals and rooms taxes are lower because people didn't make as much money this year, then that's going to affect the education fund, which I'm sure isn't the whole picture, but that's, that's what I was able to get. Yeah. Although they've been saying that more people are buying alcohol now than groceries. <laughs> that's, that's probably true. It's, it's uh, the big problem is the shortfall of the education fund and money that we normally get um, won't be heading our way in its entirety. So um, there's money from two pots that we're getting from the feds. Uh, one is this CARES Act that the federal government approved. And um, the, the recent guidance we got around that was to save that money um, for the possibility of not being reimbursed for special education expenses that we would normally have been reimbursed for and also um, to pay for compensatory services for student. Um, and that means uh, assuming that students have not been learning as optimally during this remote learning time as they normally do, uh, these compensatory services would give them more support to bring them up to speed. But doesn't that, doesn't compensatory services, isn't that going to have to be offered essentially to all students? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. That's what, and so that's that, quite... so, so how does that, I don't understand how, if the entire student body is needing compensatory services, how is that any different than just teaching them? I'm not trying to be inflammatory, but like, why is it that there are compensatory service funds if everyone is going to be at that state? Yeah. In so, theory. so first off, yeah, it would, wouldn't necessarily be everyone. And if it is everyone, it's in different areas. So we're in a proficiency based system now, which mm -hmm. means that, um, for example, we were, I was talking with the leadership team or sorry, the, uh, central office leadership team today about, uh, what summer school could look like. And that's a compensatory service. Um, the old style is that, okay, maybe a high school student failed algebra one. So they go and they make the entire course up. But in this proficiency-based realm, uh, you don't go to make the course up because parts of that course you you met you met proficiency in. There are some proficiencies or some performance indicators that you didn't meet. So those are the things that you would target as an individual. So in terms of these compensatory services, uh, you know there might be a student who really needs to catch up in math or another one in English. Um, your question about, well, it affects everyone, uh, it gets back to the proficiency-based system again. Everyone, every student is measured against a, an objective standard now. So we have these learning expectations at the end of every year. Uh, so at the end of 10th grade, you know, you're supposed to have hit this, this, and this, and met proficiency in those things. So we're assuming now that kids are not going to be where they should be. So in order to move them forward and, and get them ready for the next fall, uh, there have to be some kinds of additional interventions. Um, Adam, I have a question. You mentioned that special ed was going to have a shortfall. They are required by law to reimburse us. So if we don't get it this year, then they have to pay it in future years. Am I correct? So I'm not asking you on the special ed area. All we were told is that uh, we should set aside some of this money in, in case some of our, what we're asking for is not reimbursable. And I think it ties into services that we're providing during this remote learning stage. So there's a, not a lot of, there's a lot of new things going on, you know, where 
we're doing things in a different way. And um, typically when you write these grants, you um, are specific about what you're going to do. And we've gotten a lot of guidance around some of these grants, like, like the title funds we get. Um, in order to change some of this stuff, normally you have to draft and submit an, a, an amendment to the grant. And that amendment has to be approved. So when we submit these amendments for um, the IDEA grant that funds uh, special education, we're not, we're not going to be sure that those different activities will be approved. So it's sort of an in just in case scenario. Um, and it's, okay, it's, but it's, I, no one's sure. I understand that, but the state is the one that told us we had to close. The state is the one and the federal government and that we have to do things different. So I would assume as long as you're doing the best that we can, that they would have to approve them. Or am oh, I jumping I you, You're sounding like um, every superintendent that I've spoken to in these uh, <laughs> in daily meetings that we have. A lot of frustration. I've known a few of you. And you're, what you're saying is exactly what we're saying and uh, okay. it needs to be seen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So getting back to this budget, uh, the way the budget is done, it's all driven by the state. So if the state has a a shortfall, that's their problem, not ours. They've got to make up the, for whatever we budget. So one of the things they're saying now is that they might take these uh, this CARES Act money, which normally gets filtered through the supervisory unions, which is in Vermont, that's the LEA. And um, in this case, they might put it toward the education fund. And if that's shorn up at the end of FY20, we should be better than we currently are. But that still leaves FY21, and that's the big unknown. Um, and that's where a lot of the economic impact of COVID-19 will manifest itself. There, there has been talk about a, a statewide um, property tax increase as well to make up for some of the lost funds. Really? And I heard on uh, NPR today that, you know, there's a, you, you can tax folks all you want, but whether or not they pay is another issue. And a lot of people uh, won't be able to, to pay. It just seems so ridiculous because it's like the state is giving people money to be able to survive now anyway. So why make it, make people feel like they're having to pay more when the state's giving, like, why isn't the state just, I don't, never mind. Sorry. Totally off topic. Yeah. It's political. It's yes. political, it's, Catherine. It definitely it is. is. It also seems like even though there are adequate expenditures in, with COVID-19, and obviously there are, it's, it's confusing to me why there aren't some areas where we're saving money because we're not operating under the same system. I, I mean, I'm, I, I don't, I just don't quite understand how there are, it's like such yeah. a degree of over expenditure. So I was talking with um, John Smith today and I asked him to uh, get me the numbers on what our savings are exactly. I think the biggest savings we're going to see is in special ed transportation. Um, and uh, he estimated maybe that's, um, well, actually, no, that was another number. So he, he's got to get me that number. He's still going through the vouchers and their business office t is tallying that up. But aside from that, um, you know, there might be some supplies, uh, some other things. I, I don't think that um, we're spending a lot more on COVID-19 related expenses. Um, you know, there's the meals, but we plan on that's sort of another pot. So we really hope we should be, get re be getting reimbursed for that. Um, but aside from that, I don't think there's a lot of additional expense, I'm, I'm hoping. Are we still pay paying for placements even though the children are not attending? Uh, that's other uh, LEAs. The children are still getting services. So just as from the LEA, not pardon? us. If they someone was saying going to um, Laramie, Laramie, 
and yeah. they're now staying home. Is Laramie tutoring teaching them, or is Hardwick Elementary teaching them? Yeah, I believe Laramie is still providing services to those students remotely, just as we're still paying teachers to provide remote services. Okay. To okay. Because I know in other areas that's not happening. Okay. Yeah, and I can I can check on that as well. I'll check with Heather. Okay. Thank you. All right. So is everybody feeling comfortable about the budget stuff? I mean, as comfortable as we can get. It's basically a big unknown until June 30. Well, and it's going to be, it's, I, I think it's fair to say it's going to be great. That's the best I can imagine. Okay. In another avenue along the budget, and this is again because I'm a newbie. Where are we at with teacher contracts and paraprofessional contracts and non-teacher contracts, support staff? Can can we talk about that right now or do we have to be in executive session? I just want to know when is it coming up again? You don't have to tell me anything right. about it. I can talk about that. Um, we just uh, sent out uh, contracts to to teaching staff not yet support staff and those teaching contracts um, since we're in a negotiation year as everyone else is uh, they basically reflect a movement on the pay grid that's part of the current uh, CBA with okay so we need a new contract for July 1st pardon me we need a new teacher contract for July 1st well, we we're negotiating one for next year. The, those negotiations could potentially extend into the summer, but I, I was going to say there's that, a, but, okay. I understand the system and how that works, Adam. Yeah, I there's an addendum know. on there's an addendum on each contract that says um, this you know this contract will change subject to the renegotiated contract. Right, and when does the support staff contract expire? Uh, same time, July third. Uh, June same 3rd. time. Okay, okay. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Yep. And when when are the contracts due back so we know about positions for next year? Oh, uh, let's see. I was just talking to Tess about that. May fifteenth. The window. Um, April. April fifteenth. Uh, maybe the thirtieth. Or maybe the twenty fifth. Somewhere in April. And then they can ask for extensions. Yes, just as uh, um, Will Adams has asked us for an extension. For, right, for, right. For well, he's asked for he's asked for a um, leave of absence, but they can ask for an extension on approving their personal contract. He's asked for both the leave of absence and an extension, so that the extension okay. gives him time for you to approve or disapprove yeah. of his okay. leave of absence. Okay. So by the end of the month, we should know if anyone else is leaving. Yes, I'm gonna look in the um, in the CBA right now for that date. Is the, um, is the librarian, and I think we're losing a librarian and custodian at Lakeview? Um, I think the custodians are, those positions are being riffed and there's a new position that's consolidating them being created. Okay. And those fall under the support contract? Yes. Can I ask questions about your list of um, the yes. initial brainstorming? Yes, you can. Because I think we're if we're okay. if we're not going to continue talking about the budget, then we can move on to that. I didn't want to rush anybody, but it just seemed like it was dying off. I think you're okay. Okay, we I have noticed. All right. And, and Arise, I, I, I'm going to tell you that we haven't done any research. So if you want to ask cl like clarifying questions about what does this mean or what was the idea behind uh, this? Yep, that's what okay. I want. Okay. Um, 
My main so, question was, sorry, before, I see a lot of things. All right, so hold on a second. What's up, Adam? I just have an answer to your original question. So the contracts okay. are issued between April 15th and April 30th. And based on the time the teacher receives it, they have two weeks to return. So I believe we sent or test sent out those contracts either on the 15th or soon after at the very beginning of that window. So I'm assuming by the end of April, we should know. Okay. And the first is a Friday. So even if it went into that next Monday, the third, it's still before our meeting. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Adam, for checking that. Okay, my okay, question ahead, right. is, on the initial brainstorm, I read through them a couple times, and I can fathom, you know, where they're coming from, most of them. But there's a lot of things that pertain to Hazen. Mm -hmm. And why are we discussing Hazen at all if uh, we're just K pre-K through six? Because a lot of people have brought up yeah. the idea of sixth grade going to Hazen. A lot of, uh, and it's been mainly staff driven, I will say that the staff came in the staff meeting that we had um, and in the, uh, when the principals initially brought their ideas, there was a lot of talk about how um, there was a feeling that we were not properly meeting the needs of sixth graders, that they didn't quite fit in the elementary school. They were a little too, I'm not really sure how else to phrase this in a succinct way, and I hope this doesn't come across as politically incorrect, but like too big for their britches kind of thing in the elementary school. Um, there, was, <laughs> there was a comment from teachers saying that um, that the, uh, the common core, uh, the way it breaks down is K through five, and then the next section is six through eighth. And so that the idea of a middle school made sense. So there's been a lot of recommendations. I mean, all these are are just people saying like, hey, I think this might be helpful. Um, so okay, but I was just trying to put in, and I understand that, and I know a lot of schools have elementary, middle school, and high school, and I agree with that concept, yes. but I was just curious, like they say, Head Start at Hazen, extra support for students at Hazen, that's nothing that we can deal with, but putting sixth grade to Hazen is something that Greensboro, Woodbury, and Hardwick would have to look at and standard would have to change their legal setup to become a six through 12 with choice, I believe, because we can't say it in our district that our sixth graders are gonna to go to the middle school at Hazen because then they fall, I believe, Adam, under the Hazen school board, which would have to accept changing their they would. Set up for that's it. that's yeah. correct. And the plan is to have okay. a meeting with the Hazen board to talk about this because this has come. Okay. This okay. has come out just... as something. This has come out as something that has been expressed by multiple groups, and and we feel like we're hearing a fairly loud contingency of staff members saying that they feel like it okay. would be a good way to meet students' needs, um, which is really the ultimate what we're trying to do is is do things, okay and i yeah. totally understand that i just was wondering if anybody had thought about how much actual work it will be it's a huge amount of work yeah, yeah. i think any of these are yes okay yes and okay thank you that was my only question for now okay rose go ahead yeah i just want to piggyback on that, that um there were a number of discussions of different configurations that would involve hazen another was sending the seventh and eighth graders um, and the fifth, six, like making a whole separate middle school at the Hardwick Elementary site, right? And so a number of these plans would have to involve talking to Hazen and figuring out how that would work with their outcomes and their objectives and their numbers, right? Yes. I mean, I think that I think that there are some things that we haven't like. I think that 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 would be a it would segue well into the next sort of moment where we need to talk about how are we making. I mean, we have many, 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 many options and ideas here, and I think we need to decide how we narrow these down. And I think we need to start that process because I feel like in May we are going to need to start actually having a meeting with the Hazen board, if we're going to look at the sixth grade moving up and, and, or having a meeting, 
you know, if we're going to look at any of the things that impact Hazen, we need to look at that um, and talk to them, obviously. And then we also need to start looking at, you know, we said we were going to pick 10 ideas from the main, the large list, and then we were going to start talking about pros and cons. So I feel like that's, we're, we're getting to a point where we need to start doing that. And um, I think that we had talked about uh, creating some kind of, um, I don't know if rubric's the right way to put it, but like, uh, I don't know, some kind of thing that's going to tell us how to make metrics, these decisions. Right? Metrics, right? Metrics, like a, yeah, KPI type things. Would, uh, could I, would it behoove us that all of us create our top 10 and share them and then- That could be an idea that we have in common. That could be the idea. Was that Monica or Dorothy? This is Orais. I know that Dor was Orais. Dorothy, go ahead. This is this is Dorothy. I just wanted to, because and this is actually the main reason why I jumped on the call tonight. Um, yeah. Was because I saw some of those ideas, and um, as a parent that has a child both in fifth and eighth grade, um, seeing the suggestion of the seventh and eighth moving down to the elementary school, um, I had a lot of reservations around that. Um, I feel moving the six up to the middle school would be a, a much better solution just because of, as, as you mentioned, the teachers pointing out that they were getting a bit too old, I guess, for the elementary school. Um, moving those larger kids down to elementary, I just feel like would totally disrupt the learning environment for the younger students um, and just create a completely different atmosphere for them that's not as you know, it's not really what they need it's for either group, moving the, the seventh and eighth graders down. That's, the elementary school isn't the environment that they need. By the time they hit sixth grade, they're already itching to get out um, and to move on. Can, can I, that's a really good point. Can I just clarify one of the things about that plan? Um, I one that plan to move um, seventh eighth grade down with to make like a whole new middle school at the site, but not have the elementary kids there. So part so part of yeah that was that was the plan that yes. was offered by this a committee is member. So I, I just think it's one of the challenges with the list that we put out is that um, the ideas aren't aren't described in detail and so it's a little bit confusing so that's an idea that somebody had to like create a whole middle school that would just be k through eight or five through eight at the the now hardwick elementary site and then the elementary kids would be moved to lakeview and Woodbury. but i don't think it was described that way dorothy in the in the description right it was not no, no. But even um, even if you're talking about that, though, the for the athletic piece, the facilities that they have at the elementary school don't really can't provide what they what they ha what they need. Even the music department um, and the you know the auditorium, as these kids in in all aspects, as they're growing and developing, they need more of those resources, which are up at Hazen. Um, and to have a whole that whole building, the whole elementary school for just those three grades, just um, be basically a lot of wasted space, I guess. And I, I think it's important. Like I really appreciate your your comments about this, Dorothy. And I think it's important to also know that like some of these things that are being offered are just, we we like literally took everybody's thing. None of this has been vetted in terms of like does it really make sense? None of it has been vetted for like does it financially makes sense or space-wise like none of those things have been looked at yet so oh, yes. i think no, that, I, like, I completely yeah i completely okay, get that okay. too. yeah yep After? yeah i just want to be able to throw in my my two cents about that just because i saw that and i saw it was a discussion piece and um and, and moving that yep. way yep. yeah it's super helpful to have that 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 um response and feedback okay I adam just, i heard you yeah i just had a uh I want to get back to Luke's point about metrics. Um, you know, you have your vision objectives that you established at the beginning of this year, and I think it right. those are a great set of, of metrics to sort of measure uh, each of these models against. Yeah, and so the, go ahead. Hi, sorry, it's Lauren. Um, yeah, I just want to say piggybacking on what Adam said is that I think, and Luke, is that the 
I think that what we need to do is decide what are our criteria for evaluating each of these. What, and go back to, again, why are we doing this? We want to improve, you know, we're improving education. We also obviously have a financial um, th decision to make here. And that was one of the reasons, um, just piggybacking to um, the seventh, eighth, I was the one who put out the idea. There was an, there is an idea of that I had that I voiced at one of the meetings. Uh, and I, again, I totally hear um, the parental, the parents, perspective that that's not a good fit, but my idea to move seventh and eighth to the to the three elementary schools was based on, we need more bodies in those buildings to keep those buildings functioning from a financial perspective. And that was just one brainstorm that I had to do, to possibly do that. And we had been talking right. about needing space at the high school. So again, not vetted from a, what in, that probably just needs to get tossed out from a what's best for the kids perspective, but we have to, that's what I think we need to do next is like, what are our criteria for each of these? And then we can decide like, okay, does that work for the students' needs? No, pitch it. Does it work from a financial perspective? No, pitch it. And then we'll really start narrowing these down pretty fast. And I think that that, I, and I mean, I guess I kind of like, it, it, the question is really, are we gonna do like, how, how much are we gonna belabor trying to come up with 10 ideas out of this? Because there's, you know, there are some things where I look at them and I'm like, okay, is it likely that Hazen is going to say, go ahead and take our seventh and eighth graders? Like, that's fine. We don't need, they're thinking of an expansion at their school and they're going to offer up two of their grades. Like, I don't think that that's realistic to imagine that they will, but I'm one out of eight board members. So my question sort of is, like, none of our metrics that we had in our visioning process had anything to do with, do we think Hazen would actually go for this kind of thing? So while I like the idea of using our visioning things, which I think have a lot to do with like, it was um, uh, like students ability to, to have a voice and staff ability to have a voice. And like a lot of them were very like really awesome things that I think we all want to have. I'm not abandoning them in the least bit, but I wonder if they are going to help us really to cut some of these things out. And I want, cause none of them, I don't think any of them say anything about, I mean, I'm going to actually, I'm going to pull them up because I'm wondering if any of them say anything about like- I just like, pulled them up, Catherine. Well, I think okay, it's a good idea to start with, let's start with them. And then we may need to add other pieces, but that, but that equity, I know equity was a big thing that we came up with. And right. I think that's a really important question as we evaluate these ideas. I, yes, who just said my name? Catherine, can so, I pipe yeah. in for a second? This is yep. Sam. Hey, Sam. Hi. Um, I had just been looking at them while you guys were chatting. Um, there is one about campuses are places for staff and students to experiment and experience. That's the only one that specifically men mentions campuses. Um, mm -hmm. But we also had three words that we had chosen as a board that was the connected, flexible, supportive. So I feel like maybe just looking at those three words plus looking at what Lauren was saying about is it equitable, like is it best for all students, yes or no. And then if it passes that metric, then does it save us any money, yes or no. So we've got fluidity and connection among and between campuses, social and emotional support for student and staff, and engagement, pride, and excitement to learn and collaborate with community partners. So the one thing I'm going to point out is that none of those specifically speak to community partners within the community that the student lives in. And that's one thing that I keep hearing, especially from, uh, especially from Woodbury and from Greensboro, that is super important, which tends to be something we trip over, that it's not just community as a whole, it is specific community within the town that the school building is located in. And that, and, and so as somebody, like, I don't personally feel that community means specific to the building where the, where the town is located, where the, the town where the building is located, but I, I have been getting that feeling from 
other com other board members. And so I think I'm tr I'm trying to understand when we say something like engagement, pride, and excitement to learn and collaborate with community partners. Can we talk about community within the district as opposed to talking about community within the town? I mean, well, I, I think. Oh, go ahead, Tim. So, um, what first popped into my head for that piece, Catherine, when you were saying that was mm -hmm. the fact that we're all looking at each, all of our towns are looking at decreased enrollment. So mm -hmm. I think um, when I think about community, as far as the community that the kids are in or that the, that their family is in, maybe um, it would be great if we could try to, I don't know how to say this. Um, it would be great if we could keep it so that students come back after they're done with their education and come back to their community. Meaning if they're from, Hardwick, they come back to this area, and that in the end would hopefully increase our enrollment. Obviously not for years, but, you know, keep them connected to their local community where they're, where they're physically living. And I think that, okay. Uh, Phoebe, did you want to say something? No, not particularly, and I'm just listening. No. I thought somebody else was talking with, I thought somebody, I'm sorry. I thought somebody was going to say something when Sam was saying something. Um, yeah, I think I was, but I, um, I think I kind of lost it. I think my thought about the, the concerns that um, I'm hearing from, you know, Greensboro standard and, and Woodbury folks is, is the concern for the smallest kids and the logistics of, Go of younger elementary grades in particular, um, families doing um, pickup and kind of all of the logistics of having your school be, um, you know, a half an hour from your home plus, you know, power plus bus ride, that kind of thing. So I'm not sure there's the community piece, but then there's just also the logistical pieces of, of trying to keep um, things more localized or um, to reduce the burden on parent and extended family who may be, um, you know, up, upended by having so then, the, you know, the, the transport piece. So um, here's what I'm, go ahead, Rose. Oh, I just, I just wanted to speak to two quick things. And one was that at the Woodbury meeting, um, I think it was uh, the art teacher whose name I just forgot for a second, Beth. Beth was saying that there had been a lot of consultations, paid consultations in the past, and she was hoping we could get a hold of some of those results um, because they'd be useful to inform some of this um, visioning work that had already been done in the past and we could utilize some of that. So that was one point. And the other was that I think a point that Alex Peltz made at, at the Woodbury um, brainstorming, or maybe it was part of brainstorming, um, about using metrics to decide among these choices. And I remember him saying something about just making a really clear rubric with like three um, criteria. And I feel like it would be really easy to get bogged down in some of this language and what we think it means. And I, I think if we can make a metric that's really fairly succinct, it'll help us to narrow the choices. So we, that's, that's my spiel there. Okay, so so what I'm gonna so I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that's incredibly unpopular right now, and I'm gonna say that none of our metrics, none of the things, not of not of our metrics, but none of the things that we came up with in our board retreat, have anything to do with how long a kindergartner is going to be on the bus, how difficult it is for families to get their children to school or to participate in school things. Like we came up, and I'm I'm gonna say this: we came up with very white collar things that we want to see in our schools, we did not come up with things that working families have to deal with, like getting to and from school, accessing services that they might need. Like none of that is in the board retreat information that we got. So if we're looking for three metrics, then do we need to create new metrics? Because fluidity and connection among and between the campuses, social and emotional support for student and staff, you could say that that has to do with bus rides, but that's getting it very, like, that's a different, like, when I think of, like, social, I mean, like, I, my kid, I live in the town my kid goes to school in, and he still has to take a 45-minute ride on the bus. 
so like i'm what i'm trying to get out here is that the like we came up with these really nice things but then what i keep hearing from the board it has nothing to do with these things it has nothing it doesn't mean those things aren't valid at all like i totally think bus rides are completely valid but and don't, don't you think catherine when we came up with those I rem what I remember at, from that retreat was that our vision included keeping all of three, we weren't really looking at redoing the campuses when we came up with those. So maybe we do need to just come up with new metrics because and I think that's our, vision, our vision was so much about like, how do we connect the three campuses and keep them all going and keep them all vibrant? We weren't thinking about moving anybody around, you know, that wasn't, so our, then, you know, and, and that is, I, it's just as a chair, I am not going to tell you guys what to do. I'm just pointing out that like, this is not, this does, these two things do not, we're not gonna put it up against this one thing and get information for this other, so. I, I feel that same way. And I also, I just, I feel like you, it's hard to take the visioning work that we did then with a really different goal in mind um, and try to use, it, it's just clunky and, and it, it doesn't work very smoothly. I feel like we need to create, new metrics for this particular visioning work to figure out what what are the three major criteria and not get so far into the nuances. So then let's talk about the new criteria because I feel like some, and, I, and I'm gonna, put, I'll put the first thing out there. One of the things that I feel like we have said a lot about is that if the staff is saying this is something we need, that we need to listen to that. So I feel like stuff that is brought by the teachers and the staff of the school is like pretty important because they're with the kids all the time. And I don't know how everybody else feels about that, but which, which it obviously brings the sixth grade question in because I feel like that was something that was brought, like we invited all the staff from the whole SU or the whole district and everybody, like a lot of people showed up. It was impressive. And the sixth grade was a big I conversation point. Could Catherine, I, add I agree anything? that the staff and students should definitely, their ideas should hold a little more weight. But I also wonder if, it, I don't know if, enough about the community feel at, the, at Woodbury and Hardwick, but I wonder if one idea that might sound like it's great for Lakeview might not be great for how things are going at Hardwick Elementary. Like it might, you know what I mean? I mean, Could I don't I know. Another... Yep. I'm sorry. One thing that hasn't been discussed um, is that the money follows the student. So if the sixth grade goes to Hazen, the OSUED is going to lose a big chunk of money. So that's yes, something that's... I think should be considered. That's very true. And I think that that I think that that consideration is important, but I also think that what is important to recognize is the fact that this was something that was brought by the staff saying, if we're talking about everything that can be put on the table, we feel like this would be the best thing for students. This is something we want to see happen for the students. And so, yes, it would be a hit for us and it would probably mean that we would have to significantly change the way that the elementary schools are being used, but um, that it also means that we would be saying, we realize this is the best thing for the students. And so we are going to do this. Like that's, this is the thing. We're not gonna be able to keep everything the way that it is. We're going to have to change something. I just, I wanted to jump in with the, the sort of, I would say that the sixth grade piece was, was one of the top pieces of that discussion where we had 31 teachers and staff on that call. And, um, but the other top thing that hasn't been mentioned in this call is um, the um, daycare, pre-K, aftercare, daycare combination of things um, that uh -huh. is, that was a real high need. And it sounded like I would say second on that top list of things that were discussed in that meeting was that. And then, and this, yeah. The thing about that, which is really cool, is that that could actually draw revenue into the SU, to the district, which would be like, I think that it, I think that that is an important thing. Like, I'll, and, and I'm not, uh, I'm, I do not represent one of the smaller schools. And so I realize 
the I realize the privilege I'm able to sit on by saying this, but it would be great if we could somehow bring in some revenue from outside of our district to help us with 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 our budget and and having a vibrant pre-k program that included infants because that is a huge huge need in our towns that would be really really good and Catherine another piece that we've brought up in the past that is another one of those moving pieces in terms of like having different space available in different buildings as we've talked also about the desire and need to bring students home that are in those alternative placements. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about like moving kids here or there and freeing up space here or there or whatever, that was another, that's another moving piece that connects to that bigger idea. Yep. Catherine? Uh, yep. Is it legal to have younger children in the school where you're charging them a tuition? We would, I think that one of the conversations or one of the ideas that had been brought up was to turn uh, one of the smaller schools into a, into something that would be more like four seasons where it would have, where it would have pre-K, but it would also have an infant program because the infant right, program. We, I, I, you know, it doesn't matter where we put it at this point, but theoretically, if we were to do that, we would be charging parents a tuition to bring their non-school age children or after school age programs. Um, we currently don't charge for REACH, but if you did yeah, something do. else, can we, we do that? We do charge for REACH. So if there a kid is. signs up for REACH, they have to pay for it? There is a payment. It's a sliding scale and it's oh, based I didn't on realize income. That. Okay. Yep. There's a sliding scale and it's based on income and you don't have to pay if you can't pay. But, right. but there is a charge for reach. Okay, I did not realize that. But if you were to take in, say, a two-year-old mm -hmm. who is not a pre-K, is it okay for us to charge that parent a fee? And that's a good question that I don't know the answer to, but that's part of what we would, I mean, I think that what we would say is pre-K and infant care is gonna be on our list of things we wanna see. And specifically, this would be new a new program, not, rehousing head start but it would be a new program and then then if it made if it made that list of 10 then we would go to whoever we need to go to to find out the legalities of all this stuff. okay okay thank you i did uh -huh. and discuss okay uh kim um when woodbury was putting its after school program together mm -hmm. uh we looked at whether or not we could charge a printed charge in the uh, legal ramification was that we could not charge um, if it was a school activity, i.e. after school program. Well, the REACH program is allowed to charge. I mean, my kids have both been in REACH. I paid I paid $200 for this this spring ses session and I mean, they're, they're allowed to charge. It's not a, they can't, you don't have to pay to get in. But it's, but yeah, there's a charge for it. But REACH is with the grant and it's not quote unquote a school function. So this is way outside of my like right. knowledge base. Like we're, this is, we, what, what our job is to do right now is to decide what is our metric going to be to whittling down this list of like 20 things to 10. And then we'll go, we'll send them to the central office and say, are there any legal problems with any of these ideas and have them be fleshed out and then and then we'll go from there and we're going to ask you know the public can come in and give comments and pros and cons about the stuff and then we're going to whittle it to three and then really look at the budgetary thing and then so on and so forth can so, i ask another question yes, um, after we get i'm uncomfortable with this kind of a meeting yeah, um, yeah. I, I realize that I'm probably the old hat and not used to such things, but I also would like to think that I represent some of the senior in the whole district. Um, I deal with a lot of them in another line that I do. So I'm just concerned that if we try to rush through this and do it before September, say, with the 
coronavirus and everything that's going on. We can't have public meetings. We can't have the Gazette isn't even printing. So people that don't have access to computers or smartphones aren't getting their Gazette. So there's no way to get news out to them. I really don't want us to rush through this until we can hold public meetings and inform our public what we're doing and why. We can get to that point, but we still need public input, I think, to get to that point. And I'm uncomfortable looking at some of these and thinking about how people that don't have the wherewithal to do what we're doing right would now be left out. And I'm afraid with only two public here tonight, and it was advertised again on Front Porch Forum, which is on computer smartphones, um, we're losing 90% of our audience. And I agree with you. I think that um, I think that the I think that the way that we were looking at the timeline uh, was that we were going to make the decisions about what gets cut from this list. And then we were going to open it up to the public to give their pros and cons. And that was going to happen over the summer. And we can try to have some, I mean, we can send out mailers if we want to do that with phone numbers. I don't know how much that's going to ask, like that's going to encourage people to call in. Um, I know that this is a limited uh, way of, um, of reaching the public. Is but there a rush? We, uh, well, the, the, the concept of, I think that the idea was that we wanted to have something in place that would be ready to be put into the budget for the following year. And considering the fact that we may be facing an incredibly difficult budget um, for, for 2021, um, I, I, it's, it's the budget that we're up against. I think that that, that is, that is sort of what we're, what we were looking at initially that we wanted to have something ready to go into the budget for that year. The only thing that I saw in here that would have a positive effect on the budget and you could do in that time span was the bottom of my first page, which says bring all students to Hardwick Elementary. And that the I rest, not, not, I'm not saying I support it or not, that's just, but the others are going to take at least a year or more to put into place. But I, but, but my question for that is I don't think that necessarily moving all of the students anywhere or moving some of the students anywhere is going to be any easier. Like moving the kids up to Hazen is not going to be any more difficult than moving all the kids to Hardwick. Like there's no, there's no, I don't, I, I don't want, like we as a board can't sit here and say, this is going to be the easiest or best thing to do in terms of like, what's going to save money. That is something for the, for the central office to tell us. I, I also wanted to bring back uh, a point that I think Haley Kane made at the uh, Hardwick meeting, our first brainstorm, and she was suggesting that, um, that it doesn't have to be an all at once idea that there might be a way to roll out a, a trial period or preliminary um, period where we try out one of these ideas. Um, and I don't know if that's still on the table, but at the time that she suggested it, it seemed to make sense as sort of a, um, a progressive step rather than a sweeping change. I don't know if that's possible. I think that it's going to depend on what we end up doing. Yeah, can I jump in there? Um, yeah. I think it's definitely going to depend on what we end up doing. Uh, you know, what we wouldn't want to do is make a drastic short-term move. This is Luke. Okay, hi, Luke. Thank you. Hi. Right. Yeah, um, I just, I don't think it would be good for the kids to make a, a real drastic move for one school year and then change to something else. I don't think we're talking about doing that. What we need to be focusing on right now is how do we whittle down this very big list to a smaller list? And I'm not hearing, I'm not hearing a lot of like, I'm not hearing a lot of information from you guys or opinions of, as far as how do we make those decisions. Okay, I have, I have some things I'd like to share on that. I okay. feel that equity should be on the list so that um, all students in OSUD have access, equitable access to their educational program. 
you know, we can get a little more specific about what that looks like, but just as a broad brush, making sure, like, does this equitably serve all the students of OSUED would be okay. one criteria that I would propose. Another one, I know, like you said, OSSU is going to have to kind of crunch the numbers, but um, can we make a quick pass of will this save us money? You know, that mm -hmm. it, or will this, it doesn't even have to be save us money. Will this help solve some of the, um, Sustainable. I lost. And maybe that. Or maybe is that, it please? financially sustainable? Would be the second criteria. So, financially sustainable. Those are my two. <laughs> hey Kim, are those your dogs? Those are okay. Kim just. Okay, so Phoebe said equity, access, developmentally appropriate, best practices in education, financial viability, and sustainability. So I'm getting equi equity is a big piece, financial is a big, I mean, we have, to, the financial piece has to be in there, I think. And I don't know that we can necessarily, I don't know that we can necessarily, like, uh, I don't know that the board can say much about that. Like, that's the part that I have a hard time. I totally agree that we need to have this be financially realistic and sustainable, but I don't, I mean, I can't, there's some of these things where I can say, like, I don't think that's going to work, but I don't, I don't know. Catherine, could we yeah. break it down, like, into maybe four categories? Equity, equability. Yep. Uh, good for the students. Uh, budget. Mm -hmm. and community impact and ask how each one of those ideas impacts on those four columns and go from there to whittle it down all right so then let's can we could you, are you guys cool if we just start this we've got like a like 50 minutes left if we just like start going each one by each one Sure, I'm good. Okay, that. so let's take the first one. Monday through Thursday, regular academics. Fridays, Forest Friday for outdoor. Wait, 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 wait. No? Okay. No. Um, one of the things I think is really important that we said we weren't using this meeting to narrow down these choices. And I just, um, from like a standpoint of like letting the public know what was going to happen, I feel that it's really important that we not do that tonight. I agree. I don't think we talked about whittling it down. I think we just talked about coming we, we up with did. We did. We, we did. Specifically, we specifically said that we would do it in May. No, that's a good point. We don't want to spring anything on anybody. But we could discuss each of them without I, by these criteria without eliminating any. I mean, I just... Think I yeah. think that's fair. I just don't think that we can, we can um, eliminate any of them tonight because we said that we would wait till May. I don't think anybody said anything about eliminating any ideas tonight, only to come up with a mechanism to evaluate them. There's right. A big I, difference. I agree, but just um, when, when we start going down through them, and, and I just wanted to make sure that we weren't eliminating any of them. Catherine? Yep. Um, I'm looking at what the Front Porch Forum thing is that we put out at some point. And in it, it says that... Um, Oh, now I lost it. Uh, oh, it says, below are some initial ideas that have come from forth from various people. In May, we will get into the pros and cons of each idea and evaluate ideas with a set of criteria that will include sound educational practice, research, and financial viability. So it does say May in that. Right. But in order for us to, we like, okay, so here's something I'm going to ask you guys about. And I want you to think about this really carefully. Do you want to present this entire list of things to the public and try to have them pro and con every single thing of them? Because my understanding was that we were going to have 10, like we were going to toss out the outliers and we were going to have 10 ideas for them to do pros and cons with, not the entire list. I think that's a really bad idea. I read that, Catherine, as, as the we doing the pros and cons would be the board doing the pros and cons of each idea. No, I had the, I thought we were letting the public say what their pros and cons were, that they were going to be able to weigh in on how they felt about the different ones. In May, yeah. 
in May, but I thought we were presenting them with a list of 10 of them that we had gone through and said, these are the 10 that we feel like we could actually talk about. Because I don't, I don't think we're going to get much, much traction to no change of the current status of things. I don't think that that provides equity or money saving. I think the community impact in general is not going to be good. Like, like I think that we have to look at these and come up with a list that we are presenting to the, I think that's part of our responsibility as a board. I mean, that was what I understood we were doing too, just kind of doing an initial curation of the list so that we, the ideas that we're presenting are a little bit more curated for everyone to give feedback on versus this giant brainstorming document. That's what I had understood as well. Because like the part-time attendance for homeschool students is a great idea and that provides equity for students, but that doesn't actually like, that doesn't really address what the point of this is, which is to try to save money and to make sure that the students in the public school are getting equitable access. You know what I, do you understand what I mean? Like, I feel like some of these are really good ideas but they're not necessarily like, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say I had what understood I mean, that we like, were going to be trying to come up with a more narrow, like a more. So for, this is Dorothy, for example, looking at the therapeutic program at HES, to me as a public, I'm trying to figure out, well, where did that come from? How did, how is that really trying to get my, our three, what does that have to do with the three schools? Right, and that was and right. Doing this whole list, yeah, sending that out to the public, in my in my own opinion, would be a disaster. Well, and this list has been public; it's on the website. Adam, okay. are you is Adam so able to get us access to the the studies and whatnot that Beth Lacours was talking about? Access to what? Um, at one of our meetings, Beth LaCour yeah. had said there was a bunch of research and, and whatnot that had gone on over the years. Yeah, when you mentioned that and earlier, said, I, I questioned what that was. So, no, I don't have access to that right now. The thing that I had gotten from... I'm just wondering if that would help us make some of our decisions. And well, I, I, I totally am in favor of us um, fleshing out these ideas and, and sort of going down through. I just want to make sure that if anything got taken off the list that it was really clear to the public because I think um, I just want it to f to f be open and and transparent and that if somebody from the public wants to say what happened to my idea or why wasn't this considered that it's clear the process that it went through. Well this is a public meeting and so we have all of this on record so if we throw something out and we say we don't feel like that's equitable or we don't feel like that helps with X, Y, or Z, then that's, then that's that. But I don't, I really, I'm really going to say, I feel like it's a bad idea to present this massive list to the public and then do pros and cons on each one. Um, I agree. Another proposal I'd like to make is things like the part-time access for homeschoolers or things like that, that kind of fall outside of what our, our, our defined metrics are here or like our mission, basically what our mission is, maybe we can capture those in another like, you know, um, ideas from the from community and stakeholders that, you know, something to consider in the future. So it's not like all those ideas are just lost or discarded, but that these are things that just aren't, folk, they're not this particular mission, but they're still good ideas that might find implementation in the future. Like expanding, I think expanding access for homeschoolers is a great thing to, to, for us to note as a board is important to some, you know, to stakeholders who, who came and spoke up about it and put that idea forth. So this way we're kind of not losing that, but we're still staying focused on what our mission is right here, which we have those, you know, criteria to look at. So I wonder, I was think, wondering about those same points, Lauren, and I want, oh yeah, I'm, I'm you can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, it's almost like a fourth criteria because I think some of those ideas that were brought up were around the idea of like uh, building capacity or, you know, building numbers or building, you know, having a wider impact. And, you know, some of the ideas of like the, the school identity piece, you know, like 
I wonder if that would be vetted through the equity lens because it's not all the same at every building, but it's about this idea of meeting different needs in a way that might boost our offerings as a whole system and that might bring more people into what we offer. I mean, I think that's so, a really good point. So, okay, so so where are we? Because I, I wanted to start looking at these with our four criteria and I got stopped. So um, can we look at these with the four criteria and say where we want to where we want to slot them? I, I, I think so. I just, I, I think that um, it's just should be clear that for our May meeting that that was when we were supposed to um, narrow down our options. And, and I just, I guess if we go forward with it tonight, that it's just that we're we're moving ahead of schedule a bit. Can we do them individually and then send our top ten into Adam, and maybe someone can compile the top ten out of our top ten, and we'll have a start for May. We can do that, but that's not how they. You guys can do that and send them to me, and I'll compile them. But that is not having a discussion about them. And I feel like there is something to be said about having a discussion about these as opposed to just letting each board member individually decide what they think is right and then having us trying to figure out okay. what's the top ten. I, I, that's my thought, but I don't know what everybody else thinks. I agree, Catherine, but I also wonder if there is value in sort of wrapping our minds around it, around it in some sort of sorting, prioritizing activity, but then... then bringing it up to discussion so we don't we sort of sifted through it but then we can, as we go through and people might have different ideas then that discussion would perhaps open our eyes or make us change our minds i just i have one more point to make about the entire about the the list and making sure we all have the same full list because like the one that was on french port form catherine that you sent me didn't have some of the items from woodbury's meeting or the I updated I up, if you guys all go to the ossu.org website and you go onto our OSUED um, tab, it will then take there's a thing about FPF configuration and that list has been updated. That's a living document that I am updating. So I updated it with the things that you emailed me, Rose. Oh good. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because if we do do this as a separate homework assignment that everyone's on the same list. Yeah, it should that should it should be I mean, please let me know if there's the anything on there. It's got like 40 not. things on it. It has a lot of things on it, yes. That's why I'm not yes, comfortable okay. just, just saying like, hey, show up and tell us what you think. It's hard. It's I think I, and I'm speaking from a selfish point. It's very hard to run a meeting like that where everybody has really strong opinions about something and they all feel like they can make, they can help make a decision about 20 different ideas. So I feel like we would have a much better discussion if we had narrowed it down. Let's get started then. Okay. So um, so the first one is the Monday through Thursday regular academics and Forest Fridays or Friday would be an outdoor ed thing, which I, I kind of feel like is something that goes under like the same thing as like the homeschool really? stuff. It's a way of configuration, but it's not necessarily... I don't see how that gets at what we're sort of trying to do with this. I agree. I don't really think it fits with what we're going for. I'm trying to present again, um, Phoebe. Um, I, I'm with you there. I don't see how it fits our criteria. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, I've got like a handwritten list over here that I'm doing. This is something I believe that they sort of were trialing at, not Forest Friday necessarily, but they were trialing something like this at Lakeview. I think we have kids, I looked at the test results that were in one of the last couple months meetings and the test results from two years ago to this year were dramatically lower in most of them. And if not dramatic, they were dropping 
And I feel not having five days of academics is detrimental to the kids that are struggling. And I think that I think if that you it's, want to do it maybe once a month, but not every week, every Friday. And I think that I think that at, from a board perspective, I don't necessarily know that we have the expertise to say the reasoning behind what's happening with test scores. And I don't feel comfortable with us making, I think, I think we're sort of agreeing unless a board member has something to say strongly that this does apply to what we're trying to do. I think we're sort of agreeing that this is not necessarily within the purview of the, of the point of this exercise. I would agree on that. I think especially given um, the turmoil of the Act 46 consolidation and losing principals and losing teachers, um, that it's really hard to um, figure out um, why test scores have, have dropped. Like there's so many variables and factors, but I, but I back to the point of the Forest Fridays, it seems that it doesn't meet the, the main four criteria that we're aiming, that we're measuring right now. So the next one is a community school that would be centralized at Hardwick, the wraparound student services for students and families. Um, one of the questions Can I had about that? this, Phoebe, do you want to explain this? This was kind of your, uh, your thing that you brought to the table. Uh, yeah, well, I think, you know, I think some of these ideas, including like the outdoor ed one, I think some of these ideas are, were really meant to enhance our current programming to think about, you know, um, options for students. So that's why I also think the Forest Friday still can fit in. But anyway, we've moved past that. So the community school piece, you know, thinking about our communities that have um, students, you know, experiencing a lot of trauma at home and having some like higher social emotional needs um, and families and uh, trying to provide services that um, help with that. And I, I had brought that up because I was at a school in New York City that um, did that and, and they've seen tremendous gains in terms of both academic performance and behavior outcomes. So just thinking about something that our community might need. We've been talking about that a long time or there's been conversations for several years now about you know bringing health systems together to support our families and social emotional supports for our students and families so that's kind of what that is about so do you feel phoebe that that i mean so when you initially brought this i my my first thought was that i felt like lakeview had been doing a lot of stuff um at least i thought they had been doing some stuff in terms of trying to help the community in general with their backpack program and sort of working with the food pantry this year and things like that um i'm wondering if i'm wondering if we feel like this is a this is something that applies to what we're trying to do or if it's something that is like a similar to the, the the one we just talked about the Monday through Friday academics and forest Friday thing if that's something that like we want to keep on the table but just not in the so, realm of school configuration I guess I could argue that this potentially you know connects to the lens of equity and access mm -hmm. that this can connect to the lens potentially of like financial viability, sustainability, potentially. Again, I don't know that, but I like in terms of, you know, students being sent out because our, their needs aren't being met in house, for example. Um, so those are two, I forget the other criteria at this point, sound event, uh, educational developmental practices. Right. Right, Push social emotional supports. And I don't know, so. Is this, I, I just wanted to speak to that just to sort of um, um, jump on what Phoebe was saying. I think uh, just a lot of studies right now are saying like if students don't have the health and emotional and behavioral and sort of community supports uh, for their basic needs that um, the, the education piece can't happen. So that I think goes back to the um, equitability, but um, also the best education practices, right? So then how do people from the smaller towns feel about this being centralized at Hardwick? Because Hardwick has, I mean, in terms of the town 
And in terms of the school, I mean, I think that at all of our schools, we could argue that there are a lot of social, emotional, behavioral things that are going on in the schools to try to meet the needs of the students. Hardwick itself has a food pantry. They have a health center. They have a dental center. So in theory, people who are low income who need those things from the other towns, from Greensboro and Standard and Woodbury, would already be coming to Hardwick for those things. So is this actually meeting anybody's needs if we're centralizing it at Hardwick? I think, Catherine, the, um, you know, centralization is, you know, the, all those services are in Hardwick, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the program supports available are just at Hardwick. Like I could see, you know, if there's a dental, you know, and I know there is a dental screen that comes to Woodbury, but maybe there could be, you know, if that's part of that system, they're more regular visits or whatever, or there's some, you know, Adam's talked about passenger vans, maybe there's some help with that in transportation, but I didn't, I guess I wouldn't envision it necessarily being like stationary at Hardwick. That's like where it's centralized, but that services, social supports could also be um, going to the other campuses as well. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. Phoebe, were you talking more about emotional support or health, physical health support? All of it. All right. Okay, and because honestly, the like emotional support has, I think, is where we're lacking more than in the personal health, because the emotional is what would be causing the trauma for the kids, and those are the ones that are doing the outburst and not being taken care of because we're all in the outlier areas of where emotional support is centered in the state of Vermont. So if we had a school, if there was a way to put all of the emotionally supported, the emotionally need support students, I guess it's a hard way to say it, together, um, maybe that would make it easier for them to receive the proper service because you wouldn't have a counselor going to Woodbury, Lakeview and Hardwick to see three kids when they could see three kids quickly in one school. And I know it's more than three, but, uh, and that would also help the staff because the staff could get training from the support person on how to deal with each individual because they're all different. So I think that, I think I would, like to say that we should put this one on the list in terms of, and, I, and I'm and i not 100% sure how the community school concept dovetails or doesn't with a high needs behavior program or a therapeutic program. Those are three things that I, I feel like are very similar. I mean, we have a lot of community support in, I believe in all three of the schools because I believe there's a, like a dental screening program up, in Green, up at Lakeview. Um, so this is where I sort of, I, I, I'm not 100% sure exactly where to, where to put this one in relation. We can to say yes for now and then see what happens. Okay. Can we, so, can we put like all three of those sort of in yeah. one category and say that, you know, whatever it looks like, it's still, we're trying to create something that meets the social emotional needs within our, our system. Okay. I, I, I would second that idea, um, sort of grouping those um, therapeutic health, emotional well-being kind of all in one and how it all looks obviously would be um, that would take further development. Right. Right. So then. OK, so then let's move on to try to get to the rest of these um, in terms of the specialized campuses where we feel how are we feeling about that? I would love to speak to that one. I think um, the idea of Lakeview as an arts and theater hub um, was an interesting sort of uh, idea that was being developed a few years ago and sort of in its beginning stages, but some of the key players aren't there anymore and some of the, the ties with Highland Center for the Arts aren't as um, strong right now. It, I think there's some real potential for the future, but I for that one piece of it, um, just speaking to that piece, I don't see that as um, it's not it's not a happening program at the moment. Somebody can speak up if if I'm wrong. No, I think you're right, Rose. I think it was a good idea, but it just it never really left the ground. 
So then are we just going to cross that one off the list? I, I feel pretty strongly about keeping that one on. I think there's a, I think it's a really cool idea with a lot of potential in terms so of- then I'm gonna, So then I'll ask the question of how does it provide equitable access and how does it save money? Because those are two things that I don't, I don't understand how either of, how having specialized programs at the different elementary schools, how well, that provides yeah. equitable access. Well, I agree with you, Catherine. Well, I think um, it goes with, there was a different um, item further on down the list that had to do with semester options where students would spend time at each of the three locations and you'd, um, Right? Am I right that there'd yes, be sort of a rotation? Mm -hmm. So I, I think if obviously Woodbury has really developed its outdoor ed more, and Hardwick has developed its um, STEM more, and that's I think ought to be considered in that. And I think I mean equity doesn't mean the same, right? Like equity. No, it doesn't, but it means access to it. Right. So there's choice. <laughs> You, you were concerned earlier, um, I don't know who it is because I don't recognize voices yet, about ki kids being on buses for too long. So if you've got a student that lives in Standard that wants to go to Woodbury for outdoor education, you've just put that kid on the bus four hours a day. I think that we need to focus more on school in general than specializing at this point. That's my personal opinion. I, I'm going to also I, I, say that I feel like it's a slippery slope if Woodbury has outdoor ed, because what if Lakeview wants, like, what if the parents in Greensboro or, or Standard want something like that, but it's like, well, no, we're the arts and theater. I mean, I think elementary school is really early to start specializing, to be honest. I, I was under the impression that the specializing meant that students could, that they could um, partake of the different things going on at the different campuses. It didn't mean if you were at that one school that you only got that, what that school had to offer. Right. But so what, but what we're doing by, do, but what we're doing by saying this is that we're, we're going to be. You're specialized. So the Lakeview yes. campus would specialize on art and theater. Hardwick would not, Woodbury would not. Woodbury, Lakeview would not do STEM or outdoor education as a- As a specialization. Uh, as a specialty. And kids in Hardwick would not have the opportunity to go to Lakeview for art and theater because they still need their main classes and your bus budget is gonna go through the roof because you're gonna be moving kids all day long and between Woodbury and Hardwick, it's maybe a five minute ride on the school bus, 10 in the stormy day. But to go from Woodbury to Lakeview is a half an hour. So that's an hour you've lost in the day for the kids to travel from Woodbury School to Lakeview to do theater and art for maybe an hour and then have to get back because it's the end of the school day. I am not as clear with the specialized campuses how this would provide, how we would, how we would provide equitable access to kids um, and how this would be a sustainable, a financially sustainable thing. That's my main question. I think it's a lovely idea in a lot of ways. How does it save us any money? How does it solve the problem that we have where we have these two schools that are too small to justify well, I keeping mean, them going in the current configuration? Long term, potentially attracting students who haven't bought into our public schools. We have a huge amount of homeschool students. Maybe they would like to participate in some of these programs. So if you have more students, right? But the I, thing is, I, know, that, I, question, I think that honestly, having been a homeschooler, most homeschoolers don't want to send their kids to school. <laughs> so regardless, they don't, they don't. They have, regardless of what it offers, they might want like a part-time program or certain classes. Right. But I don't see that we're gonna see them enroll, honestly, just, and that I could be wrong, but I don't see students enrolling for these programs. So, I, um, so I'm gonna, I am not, I, I, well, I guess, we should we say that's a maybe? 
Because because we seem pretty split on this. I don't think we seem split. It seems like I'm the only one that's kind of pushing for it. So we, I guess we move forward. Well, I, I guess the last comment is just, you know, from the beginning, we've talked about like, yes, we are three campuses, but like thinking about what, you know, how do we, how do we create identity at each of these campuses? Um, I'm, so. I'm still a voice for that one, Phoebe. Um, my main concern was that Lakeview hasn't really developed the arts aspect, but I really, um, I liked the idea of, um, the specialization, and I think that the idea of, of students being able to go among the three campuses um, had had some real validity to it. And I think that it's possible that students could, but I think that for our immediate short term, I think we're going to have a hard time, you know, attracting students to a program is going to be years in the making. So, but let's, let's move on from that one. Um, we've got partnership with Head Start is the next one. And I'm not, I'm not really sure. Could, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to pause for a minute now. Somebody joined uh, on a telephone. The last two digits of the telephone number are six, seven. Can you take yourself off of mute? Um, I think it's star six and let us know who you are. It keeps, it keeps, um, Catherine, it's Beth LaCour. This is the fifth time hey, I've Beth. called. I keep calling. It, it keeps bumping me off for whatever oh, reason. So okay. I, I have to stay muted and only talk for a little bit. I tried to bump in one other time before I got cut off. But the, it's telling me there's too many people on the line. So you have to remain muted until it's your turn to talk or something like that. There's like a little automated okay. voice thing that comes on. Thank so you I, very I much, Beth. Get, and I don't know how to get it off mute now. If I keep on, if it'll stop, I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, mute so, six again. Yeah, try star six, star, six again. star six again. Okay, yeah. so I'm here. I'm trying to listen, <laughs> but okay. I'm just getting bumped off. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Catherine? Yep. Could could Beth, since she's here, could she speak to the, um, she was the one that was telling us about all the research that had been done that we could use as to inform our decisions? Sure. Um, I, I mean, I when I had when I had emailed back and forth with Adam about that, he had said that the present the the uh, the ideas that were given to us from the principals were what came out of the staff visioning for this year. So anything that Beth was talking about would have been from previous years. So Beth, do you want to talk to what you had spoken about when we were all at Woodbury and you had said that there had been a consultant that had come in? Because um, we haven't been able to find any of that information. I don't know if Beth's going to be able to get back onto it here. She needs to do star six yeah. again. Uh, can you hit star six and come in and talk to us about that? Yep. Thanks. Am I unmuted again? Okay. You are, yes. All right. Sorry. I was afraid I was going to get bumped. So, um, yeah. So we've had consultants three different times, or I, I think you might have been at one of them. I, I remember they happened at the OSSU board meetings, you know, like that's where the presentations right. always happen. So maybe they're in some board minutes somewhere. Um, I never saw final documents. Of course, you know, those of us in the community only got the watered down version of whatever came into the newspaper. Um, but in all three, it basically came down to irreconcilable differences. You know, that each community wanted to keep their school open exclusively. Oh, on the, the consolidation. That, yes, the way that they were. Um, but the fact yes. of the matter is, you yes. know, like, as, as far as the ideas from the principals and the staff visioning, um, you know, like, I, I think it's like at the last one at Woodbury, where we were able to meet together, you know, like the, the group that was there at Woodbury, there were other um, teachers and you know, special ed folks and stuff and who are community members too, but from um, different towns, you know, like they work in different schools. And I think they were all of the idea that most of the things were touched upon. I think that each campus, if that's what you want to call it, and the staff on each campus doesn't see any of the sites as exclusive. Like, for example, you know, art and theater and the collaborations that Hardwick has that we use in the community with Grace and with other programs is significant. Um, what Greensboro has to offer at the Highland Art Center 
um, I don't know who was speaking, but is exactly right. Um, you know, we tried to open the door because Youth Art Month this year and Jane and I were supposed to have an exhibit um, or our students were, you know, selecting works to happen at the end of this school year, which is not going to happen again. It comes and goes, you know, so I think it, it, a lot of that depends on I think we're um, lucky enough to keep our theater programs to be able to be there because we know that Hazen, um, you know, kind of facility isn't good enough or, you know, it, it, we've used it, but it's, you have a high, higher caliber at Highland Arts. But I think for elementary performances, you know, at the Hardwick Elementary School stage or at the townhouse, you know, that what we've done with partnerships in town locally is equal in the arts and theater. As far as the place-based learning, um, certainly, you know, Hardwick has done a lot of that. And the outdoor education, I think we have now of the staff, um, four different grade levels where teachers have been trained and that are utilizing that piece as well. So I hear what you're saying about, you know, I don't think that one thing should be offered at one particular campus, but I also think it's imperative now, you guys, if, if we think of nothing else, I mean, if, if anybody got a chance to listen in and hear um, and go through what's happening with the Vermont State Colleges right now, um, looking at our budget, of course, I think every single person that I know that's unemployed or self-employed right now is in a panic about how things are going to go forward for our taxes. And yes, we're lucky to have our school budgets passed this next year, but nobody can be guaranteed that school is even going to look like what it's looked like before this virus has happened. And the amount of work, training, and digital citizenship that we're all trying to use and instill on our students is significant. Um, so, so I'm cautious about, or, or as, and this is me as a taxpayer speaking now, about how to go forward with that um, just because I'm totally hearing where people are at and their fears about their taxes in our communities um, and, and not knowing what that's going to look like going forward. I think if nothing else here, that our fiscal responsibility, you know, has, I love to dream. Don't get me wrong. I'm an idealist and I'm a dreamer, but we have to, at some point, you know, be fiscally responsible for our communities um, because, I don't want another mandate to come down because I don't know how the state is going to handle this. Sorry, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Beth. Um, okay, so we have, let's say we have 15 minutes left. Do you guys just want to keep moving forward with this? And we can move on sure. to partnership with Head Start. I don't see how part uh, like part. So this was brought up because of the fact that Head Start is looking for you a new space. Yeah. And, um, but a partnership with Head Start is not necessarily going to, this is like if we have extra space in our schools, we could try to do something like that, but it's not going to expand pre-K options. Um, nor is it necessarily. I, Go ahead. I just had a question. Um, this, my screen isn't scrolling down. So is there a, a second page where it talks about the the um, the preschool elementary. Yes. Okay. Yep. This, this is like, it doesn't scroll down because I'm showing you my screen. Oh, I got it. Okay. I see. That's I just was trying to skip two on purpose. Sorry, Catherine. You skipped two. You skipped two. You skipped, skipped high needs. The, I skipped high needs. needs and I skipped therapeutic because we said we were going to lump those in with the community school because they were so closely related to oh, the okay. needs of the okay. community. Um, I didn't follow that. That's okay. Yeah, sorry. But they're both written down as the number one, like as the first, you know, bulk option. I think, and I'm going to say right now, guys, I think it, we're not going to get through this whole list in the next 15 minutes. So we'll probably go back to like, whenever we get through, great. And then from the rest of those, we'll just, you guys can all decide what you think are the most important and you can send them to me and then I'll compile a list and we'll go from there. Can, um, can I just jump in? Um, could yeah. we maybe take a minute to make sure if there are any questions about what something means that anyone on the board who doesn't understand what one of the ideas might be so that when we go back to, to looking at them on our own that, um, that everyone knows what they mean? Okay, then let's do that. 
Does anyone have any questions about any of these? Um, what's the Shipley I, I School? I can't see them. Okay, I'm sharing my screen with you. So if you can't see them and you have a computer, if you go to the ossu.org website and you go to the OSUED under school boards tab, you go to OSUED and the third, like there's like maybe four blocks, I think it's the fourth one, says FPF campus configurations. If you click on that button, it should bring this up for you. Okay. Okay, the Shipley School thing is something that was brought to us from Trish Alley, and uh, it is a positive learning model or positive, it's like putting a more positive spin on, th and I'm not saying this all correctly, um, but basically Trish went to Shipley, which is a private school in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, and she is an alum there, and they are interested in piloting um, this program at other schools. And so the before the Act 46 merge happened, they were looking at coming up to Lakeview to do this. And so there is this sort of question of if they're still going to come up, it would be in, uh, in collaboration with the University of Pennsylvania. So it would be this sort of model okay. I'll that look would be coming up. Um, I okay, think I have data that I can try to send you guys. Let me see if I can find that. Um, That's all right. We'll do it another day. Let's get on. Okay. I have a feeling that it is going to fall more under the ideas from community and stakeholders as opposed to something that is exactly. getting more to the meat of what we're trying to do. Okay. Let me look in the thing here. Um, okay. Block specials. The block specials was an idea that maybe it would save money if we had one teacher for each specials thing. So a music teacher, a, a, an art teacher, and a library. And then you would have an entire like three-week block where you would have art every day. And the art teacher would be at that school for three weeks and then they would go to the next school for three weeks and you'd have art every day at that school and then like the music teacher would go back there are certainly are questions about like how's that going to affect band and how's that going to affect all of that sorts of things so that's like it was an idea um and doesn't sound like it be equitable i well it's not that they it's not that any child would lose out on having it it's just that they would get there, instead of having art throughout the whole year once a week, they would have like more intensive art things or more intensive music things where they would do a lot of music in three weeks instead of, and it would, and it would mean that every campus didn't have to have that one, like didn't have to have a special right. teacher on. But of course, the teachers at Greens or at Lakeview and Woodbury said, well, we're not here all the time anyway. We're split between Woodbury and Wolkett or, you know, they, they, so it, I don't know how much that's really going to, how much that would really help to save money. And I don't know how that would impact the fiscal piece of it all. Um, so I just made my screen full, but it means I can't see the other screen that says when you guys are chatting. So I'm trying. All right, uh, someone linked to the ship. Yes. Catherine, I think making it a full screen does, isn't helpful on our end necessarily, but if you zoom in on the dock uh, just a little bit to make the writing bigger, that would be helpful. Okay, let me, um, let me try this. What if I did that? Does that help? I just made it bigger. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Click your, your plus box in the upper right corner. The square a... next to the... you've got a minus a square and an X. Click the X box way up in top, way up in the that's right, right there. It. That's gonna, but that's no, gonna the, it. the square, the square, not the X. I know, the, but I don't square. need to make it. I, if I make it full screen, then I can't see the chat that's oh, happening. Okay. And people are sending okay. me stuff on chat. So yes, Phoebe, I will link in photo the Shipley proposal thing on the document. Um, to uh, Lakeview to Highland Center. Okay, that was that was an idea that was floated. That was like, what if we just move the entire school of Lakeview 
to the Highland Center for the Arts and it becomes a school instead of an arts building. I have absolutely, I don't know anything about that other than that. So that's the best I can give you about that idea. Okay. That came <laughs> to us. Sorry, Lauren, I don't. Um, no, that's fine. I was just trying to figure out if there was more to it, some, something behind it that I missed. I think that there has been some conversation at some point, um, but I really know nothing about that. Yeah, that doesn't really sound feasible. So I think we I, can pull that one off. Yep. I think it'll naturally do what it's going to do. Which one are we pulling off? I think it was the one that says, it's toward the end, that says Lakeview to Highland Arts Center. It's the third one up from the bottom. Scratch. Yep. I think that's, if we can fairly say, we can scratch that one. Year-round school, Adam, are you saying that's going to be scratched or are you highlighting it because you like it? Scratch. I don't see how that's one. That's I was going to say it's not financially viable. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, we went. We just went from. We were kind of going through to see if we all had questions. Are we going to go back yep. now to kind of just go through the list? Yep, we can go back. Um, all right. So can we combine all of? Can we all of the ones that talk about middle school? Um, Hazen, I noticed they're in various places, and I think. We need to discuss that in greater detail than we can tonight. So well, can we can we talk about this whole like various grade level reconfigurations? Because I do think that we need to kind of make a decision about. Well, we don't need to make a decision, but perhaps we could have a discussion about the concept of us taking seventh and eighth grade away from Hazen and how realistic we really feel like that is, and the concept of well, us well, sending six. Thinking... Go ahead. Because isn't Hazen hurting? for students and has plenty of space yes, as they well. Are. We're all hurting for students. I, I, I realize don't. that, but if we could I, just put all of that together for a future discussion, because in seven minutes, we're not going to solve that issue. Okay. But save that, that as one of our 10. But okay. yeah, can I just say about any of these, I, these various, I feel like the various everything that's under the various grade level level reconfigurations is kind of where the meat of our ideas is like, because that to me, looking at this list, that's the, our biggest possibility for some financial impact and also to address what we've heard from faculty and staff about, you know, the needs of the students. So my thought process is that we do need to spend quite a bit of time maybe imagining what some of these might look like. And so now here's my question, because of the fact that those often uh, include Hazen, is that a conversation that we would like to have before we talk to Hazen, or do you want me to set up a meeting between the Hazen board and our board to talk I, about, so we can be talking about that together? I Well, one, I feel like maybe we need to flesh out those ideas a little more before we go to Hazen um because otherwise they'll be asking what does this mean or what does this look like and we have no clue no right yeah, i agree but how so how so in terms of fleshing them out rose like are you thinking about like financial implications or timeline because that's that's beyond the purview of what we're saying of, we're going to do in may right um well a couple of things like i don't i think we need to know what the numbers look like, even um, rough estimates, before we start talking about moving kids around in these different grade configurations. And obviously we won't know until people fill out um, school choice, but um, I feel like it's gonna be hard to present even to the Hazen board if we haven't talked about the, these ideas very much yet. I don't, that's-, that's okay. So are, are you all comfortable with having a good conversation about configuration happening either at the first or second meeting in May? Uh, yes, yeah, and, and let's make sure that we um, very uh, put that out there in the warning, you know, in the warning in terms of the agenda, maybe, like, so that we maybe we'll get more public input on some of these. I don't know, just a thought. Mm -hmm. I also, um, I think that it's, when we do begin to talk about those configurations, the one that the ones that involve Hazen, I think that should be our next meeting. 
um, especially because they're looking at a bond vote and obviously this would figure into that. Well, right. And that's why I'm trying to have, I mean, in terms of numbers and things like that, we know how many kids, how many sixth graders are in the, in the district, regardless of whether we know where they're going to school or not. We know where, how many of them there are and we know the capacity yeah, for friend. each school. Is it possible that you just have an informal conversation with Steve, the chair of the Hazen board and tell him that our board is looking at this issue and just want to give them a heads up? I had, an, I, had an I had an informal conversation with Amy already because I have a relationship okay, with her and so I don't know Steve very well. Um, and I believe that she okay. told, I believe she told this, the Hazen board and, and okay. I told her that we were happy to have a conversation with the Hazen board about it, but that like, she should know that this was coming to us as I did not phrase it that we were making this decision and doing this because that's not where we are, but I just wanted her say, to know. Right. Um, just I'll just say ahead, Adam. the Hazen board is, is a little anxious. Um, they think decisions are being made and they haven't been consulted. So it, it, I think it's I just, great that you're, you're talking about meeting with them and I'll certainly convey that to them. I, okay, I, I felt that too. I just wanted to speak to that, that, you know, there was already concern in the community um, because the word got out to the Hazen board and people, you know, they get a little bit of information and people get confused and concerned about what's happening. And um, I feel like it is really important to have a conversation with them, but I also feel like it's not really helpful if we give them like parts of the story. It, I think we have to know what what we're presenting before we present it. Well, right, but the thing is that we're not gonna go, we, this is like a chicken and the egg thing. We're not gonna go to our communities and say, what do you guys think about this? If this is something that Hazen says absolutely no to. Like, I don't wanna waste the community's time and say, what do you guys think about sending all of our sixth graders to Hazen if Hazen's like, there's no way we're gonna do that. So we have to talk to them first before we can present this as something to the community to see if the community is down with it or not. Right. Right, but we have to decide whether we want to do it in the first place. I, I can't I decide like whether spreading, we can. I feel like spreading when we're all, saying we're all hurting for students, I feel like spreading them out more and getting rid of some of them to Haven. I, I don't know. I'm not... I I'm not hugely attached to that idea. And I agree with you, Sam, and I would not be pushing this forward in the way that I am asking it for serious consideration if the staff had not come to us and said, we want this to be a consideration. Well, it was one of their considerations was sending them to Hazen. Another was sending sixth graders to one to of academy. the campuses. Right. And, Wouldn't and that the solve the problem? Except for the fact, except for the fact that they were also saying that they, there were also p voices saying that they felt like two transitions for them would not be a good idea, that there's no need to have a separate right. sixth grade academy and then send them on to Hazen. Right. And in a way, yeah, that's right. true. We don't and if you look have at best like practices. There's not a lot of evidence out there for the. There are some of these sixth grade academies that have happened, but there's not. I looked up some of the research and there's not a lot of really good evidence, whereas there is some evidence that these multiple transitions lowers test scores and lowers student, um, you know. Because I have to get used to a new place. And yeah. I mean, honestly, if we had a sixth grade academy, I have very. I am not 100% sure that we can only have one school just dedicated to one grade. Right, and then we get back to the equity question. Right, because I mean, what kind of, what would sports look like when you just have sixth graders? Right. So, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I think that there are a lot of considerations that we, we do need to have. I fully agree. We need to have a serious conversation about all of these different ideas. So, okay, but we are, it's 8.01, so um, yes, we could invite the Hazen board to our May meeting, but I'm also hearing, do people want to have a more of a serious conversation about this before we talk to the Hazen? I mean, I... I think my personal opinion is we need to talk before we visit with the Hazen board. That's my vote. Okay. Does anyone else have a feeling? Do you want to have the Hazen board at the May meeting or do you want to have a discussion before we talk to the Hazen board? I, I personally would like to have a chance to just go through. Sorry. Kim, can you mute yourself? 
<laughs> I'm working on it. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, I'd like to um, have a chance to go through them all. I agree with or I need to go through them a little bit more detail before we invite them, but maybe there's a way that we can communicate to the board, the Hazen board now that we're not moving, that this is at a very early brainstorming stage and, and just kind of like calm any, any anxieties there. Can we, you know- I will send, I'll send an email to the Hazen board. Okay, that'd be great, thank you. And I'll CC you guys on it. Thank that you. sounds great, Catherine. Thank you. Yep. 